So uh, I didn't really introduce myself so much in my other talk. Uh, so I'm Tim Orling. I'm a principal software engineer at Consulco Group. Um, also a board member of Open Embedded uh, Board. And I maintain MetaPython and MetaPerl and crops containers and a whole bunch of other things. And I've been in the community for actual committing for nine years, but uh, even longer than that. Um, so this talk is a, a, another quick lightning talk about uh, running QMU images using the libvirt enabled things like with vert.io and Versh and vert manager or virtual machine manager is what it looks like when it's on your desktop. Um, so Consulco Group, uh, we're a services company. We do all kinds of embedded Linux uh, stuff and open source stuff. Uh, we do hardware and software build and design and we do training. Uh, we're one of the Linux Foundation training providers also. Um, we're based in San Jose, but actually we've got 16 people globally. Uh, and we do all kinds of really crazy work for customers. It's very interesting. So this was a, a customer a problem. Um, we have some more complicated QMU usage. We, we needed to pass through a USB stick from the host uh, because we wanted to do like you know, mender updates from a USB stick and things like that. And also this was a case of using uh, machine learning um, with robot operating system and things like that. And, and so we needed to pass through the GPU for the NVIDIA drivers for, for CUDA so that it could be tested on the development machine and not only on target. So RunQMU doesn't work with the Mender U UEFI image. Um, so Mender has their own script, the Mender QMU script, but hacking that was getting really complicated to support um, the pass through and things like that. And this was all, the original work was all on Dunfell. Um, so there were some things that were awkward there. Uh, the customer also wanted some some GUI VM management. They're you know pretty much a standard um, desktop user. So the solution here is to initially use virt, uh, virt manager to create the domain XML. So a domain is a virtual machine in in libvirt parlance and the uh, way it's defined is through an XML file. So once you've done that, then you want to actually go and edit that domain XML file to add the Yako built uh, OVMF and OVMF VARs and also the the uh, image that you're you're trying to boot. And the QCOW2 is a, a format for uh, that's commonly used in, in cloud images for uh, for wrapping raw images. Uh, so after that, then we, I would use Versh to actually create the VM um, after this first creation of it, and then use Vert Manager to configure options, do different things. So in this case, I'm using Mender, uh, MetaMender QMU as an example, because that worked. Uh, I tried to use Core Image Minimal and Core Image Full Desktop and uh, full command line, and it didn't quite work, and I'm not sure why, and I, I didn't want to waste time on it. So I just made sure I did something I knew worked. Um, so this is just the important stuff in the local.conf. It was for the QMU X86-64 machine, and you know, which is what the host is as well. Um, and then we want to use the VDA, which is the vert IO disk, uh, so virtualized disk. Um, in this case, because I wanted to play around with with USB and PCI, I want I want USB utils and PCI utils so that I have LS USB and LS PCI available. And then the image FS types, you need to take whatever the, the WIC image or whatever it is that you're trying to build and append the dot QCOW2. And uh, that's a conversion, sort of like doing a compression, but it, it just runs an extra command to make the image. So I want to just note for the Dunfell work, um, MetaMender Core actually needed a change to allow Dev VDA. This is not the case in Kirkston, but um, in, in Dunfell, it needed this one letter added to the Mender Helpers BB class. Otherwise, you couldn't use Dev VDA. 
Um, also, I had a couple of times in, in different places where the QCAL conversion from uh, within BitBake didn't work. So this is just a handy reminder of how to actually use the command line tools to, uh, to do the conversion. It's very fast. Um, so I, I didn't want to do, I didn't want to um, tempt the de demo gods by trying to do a video and everything. So I just did some screen captures. So once you've done your initial build, um, you can launch the virtual machine manager and click on the little uh, image with the, the bright light on it to create a new machine. The important thing is you need to do import existing disk image. And then really important, you want to do a uh, customized configuration before install. This is absolutely critical. If you don't do that, um, you'll have trouble. So uh, it skipped a screen where it shows that you, know, you set the name of the, the, the machine and also the uh, OS. And so generic Linux 2020 is, is the choice you want to use there. So the reason for needing to do the configuration is you really, really need the UEFI firmware in this case. Um, and so this is the default UEFI firmware that's built into the um, into QMU and, and Libbert and everything. So uh, once you've set that, then you can go and click begin installation and it'll actually uh, go ahead and launch the image. Uh, and when you look at the console, and I just went in to run LS USB just to show that all it has is the default, um, uh, the default uh, devices, and so then you can go. This is this is where using Vert Manager was handy, is you can very easily go click on the Add New Hardware button and then do USB Host Device and then select in this case the flash drive. And then if we go back to the VM, we now see, you know, if you do D message, you'll see that the, the device was mounted um, and you can see it listed in LSUSB. Um, and it turns out that, that the, the thing I wanted to look at was uh, from the installer uh, stick that I was talking about earlier. So that, happened to be on dev FDA too. So I think the UDEV rules didn't quite kick in because it wasn't really like a hot swap. I, I, I'm not sure, I, but anyway, I, so I had to create the mount and, uh, and actually mount it. And then I could look and see what was on the stick. Uh, and for PCI pass through of the, the GPU, your GPU has to support it. So it has to be modern enough. Um, so once you've done that in Etsy, Libvirt, QMU is where it will create the domain XML file and it's named based on the name that you, you gave the machine. Um, so this is just the top of it. And I just show you know, there's the, the name of the machine and it's got a UUID and some other stuff. It's a pretty long file. Uh, so once you've done that, and you got it working on regular Vert Manager. Now you want to go and uh, get ready to use Versh to make it easier to, to create and launch the machine. So uh, copy that XML file into your build directory to make it easy to use. And then you need to uh, chmod it to make sure that you have permissions to run it uh, or to read it and write it. Um, and so one of the things you want to do is change the OBMF QCAL2 to the one built by Yakko project and also the OBMF bars um, to be the one built by Yakko. Uh, the next thing you wanna do is just make sure that the disk source file is, uh, is the proper path. It should have been because of how you picked it from the, the menu earlier, but um, just make sure it's the same. Uh, so then to actually use Versh, uh, it's really simple. You just do Versh create and then the name of the XML file. And then it tells you that it created the domain. And then you can do Versh list to show the, uh, that that machine is running. Uh, but this is on a machine that has 
passwordless pseudo, so um, it didn't need, I didn't have to use pseudo. On some distributions, you might need pseudo. Uh, and then to destroy the VM or, or tear it down, you do versus destroy the name of the, of the VM or the name of the domain. Uh, so once it's running, you can go over to Virtual Machine Manager and you'll see right away that it's running because of the power of Libvirt. Um, and then you can go ahead and click on that uh, second icon over the open uh, icon to show the um, console if you like. So the last thing I wanna say is just be really careful when you're deleting the VM because it will delete the uh, var the OVMF vars qcow2 and the uh, and your qcow2 image out of your build directory um, and that's probably not what you want and so just you probably want to not delete associated storage files in this case but it's really fast to uh, you know do your build and, and launch a new VM and make make these changes to uh, do some fancier things that are kind of hard to do with the regular command line tools. So that's all I have, uh, another lightning talk, and uh, happy to look at the questions and then and then I'll take more, but let me look at the questions already. Um, 